Alright, what's going on guys? Uh, really excited to post this new Game Room Tour video. Haven't posted in a while, so I thought uh, the best video to put out would be a Game Room Tour video. Um, these videos usually get a lot of the, uh, attention towards the channel, so um, hopefully, um, hopefully I'll start making some videos again pretty soon because uh, I miss doing that. But anyway, so uh, yeah, I'll just do a quick walk around the game game room. Um, it's changed, I guess, a lot since the last time I uh, I did a Game Room Tour video. It's probably been about two years now. Um, so yeah, all right. So we'll start over here in this corner. Um, we got a 85 inch Sony TV. Uh, I got my PlayStation 5 hooked up to it. Uh, little mini fridge. The um, VR2. My GameCube. Uh, PlayStation 3 backwards compatible. Uh, Xbox 360 Slim. And before people freak out in the comments, when I use these systems, I do take them out of the cubby so they have room to breathe. Um, the Wii U, the black one my uh, AB receiver and the uh, gamepad for the Wii U um, and for the speakers I have um, 7.2 we just put that in like actually not too long ago it's kind of pain in the butt with these ceiling tiles but I uh, just got that put in a uh, little closet here which hides my electrical box because this is my basement uh, on this wall I've got a little um, air purifier Super Mario 3 poster this really awesome game room neon sign and this is the first wall with all of my um, box collections. So, you got the box Wii, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, a GameCube. I actually just picked this up yesterday. Got this at uh, Time Capsule for a really, really good price. Uh, 180 bucks. I thought that was pretty good. It has all the manuals, all the styrofoam. has everything. It's, it's pretty nice. Uh, Sega Master System. I got this actually at uh, the random flea market a couple years ago for like 140 bucks. Um, really happy about it. This is apparently the system that I guess if you sent your system out and you bought it from Sega and it was refurbished, this is the box they'll send it in. That's what I've got from my research. So if I'm wrong, put something down in the comments. But that's basically what I got from that. Uh, a Sega Dreamcast and two controllers. A kind of like a ghost gray. A VMU and then two VMUs complete box. Got this whole little Dreamcast collection at the Playing Field Pike Flea Market. Once again, probably like two, three years ago for I, I believe it was two two hundred twenty dollars. I made a video on it, but I think it was about two twenty. Uh, we'll go up here. I got my uh, Super Nintendo Junior complete in box. Got this at uh, Retro World. Not last year. I didn't go last year. I think it was the year before that for like a hundred bucks. It's actually pretty good. Everything's in there, all complete. Um, the power set, if you watched the channel for a while, you know I got this at the uh, at a yard sale in North Kingstown. Uh, I got it for five dollars. It was missing everything. had everything in it except the system, uh, which I already had an extra Nintendo. So I already had the controllers in it, the zapper, and more importantly, the um, the power pad, which was has never been unfolded. So because once you unfold that thing, you're never gonna get it back in like you're supposed to. But Everything's in there. Got for five dollars. I'm really, really happy with it. the box. Is actually in like beautiful, beautiful shape as well. So, yep. Uh, Nintendo. This is the action set. I got this a long time. I've had this for about maybe like 10, 15 years now. I forgot where where I got it from, but um, it's all complete in the box as well. Uh, Super Nintendo complete in box. Got that. I believe at. I think I got that at Retro Road as well. Maybe the year before that. I, I'm, I'm not really sure, but I had it for a couple years though. I uh, just picked this up not too long ago. Got a Sega CD Model 2. I uh, got my Sega Model 3 Genesis. And then my Sega Genesis Complete in Box. I got the box actually. Probably about maybe like 10 years ago. Uh, my mom does house cleaning out services. And um, like she does um, estate sales and stuff. And um, she found this in one of the basements. And I got it for a really, really good price from her client. Only problem was is that it has a little bit of a gas right here in the middle of the box. But honestly, other than that, the box is in like beautiful shape. Um, this is probably one of my crown jewels in my collection. I have a few of them, but this might be probably the, the biggest one. I literally just picked, as of this filming, today is Monday, the day after the Super Bowl. I picked this up at an auction on Thursday. This is a Sega Genesis kiosk. I'm not sure exactly what store it came from. I'm trying to get not too close so it doesn't really drown my sound out of my voice, but... Uh, it's basically all complete. It has the original, as you can see here, has the Sega Genesis Model 1, 
And now uh, you can't see it very well. Let me see if I can put the lights up a little bit. Not a little difference at all, but it has a six game switcher. I do not have all six games connected right now. Because if, if I did, you can press a button and it will change the game. This is a real big pain in the balls to honestly get all the games to work at the same time. Like, it took me probably about 10 or 15 tries, honestly, to even get the Sonic game to work. And I can't imagine adding five more games. So as of right now, it's just plain Sonic. But I'm going to take it out probably and just use an air compressor and get all the dust out. But, um, yeah, I got out of um, an auction here in uh, West Warwick, Rhode Island. Um, Paid just about after the, I believe it's the 10% buyer's auction premium fee, whatever it is. Uh, it was about 816 bucks after everything's set and done. Uh, like I said, almost complete. Someone painted it blue. Um, it's supposed to be white, so maybe I might do some refurbishment to it and paint it white. And it's also missing a little Sonic poster and then a little Sonic guy right here. This is not part of it. I just added this little Sonic dude here. It looks kind of cool. But yeah, this is my uh, Sega Genesis kiosk. This is this thing is awesome, honestly. Like, I'm really really happy with it. So, move over here. Got some little random um, posters kind of thing. And then this is my door out of the game room. There's another shelf over here. Try my best to film this. Uh, I'm not really happy with the setup right now of how these systems are. I I want to get new shelves. I'm really debating on getting more of these shelves and putting them on this wall. I'm not quite sure yet, but uh, this is where I'm keeping right now all of my Sega games. So I got all my Master System, Box Genesis, Loose Genesis. Uh, I've been getting a lot of Sega CD games lately. I've, I've been on a big, kind of big um, kick on that last year or so. So I've got a, got a good amount of Sega CD games, some Saturn games. A, uh, I got all that's actually on a Facebook Marketplace deal, all these Dreamcast games besides Shenmue. So, all these, like I got Grand Theft Auto 2. Uh, what else? I had my Sonic game. I had a Sonic game somewhere. Oh yeah, basically all the all the all these games I got from one deal on uh, Facebook, and then these are all my Atari games. Another one of my crown jewels, my collection, is my Vetrix. Uh, <laughs> kind of a funny story about this. I bought this in 2011. I remember there was a. Um, a snowstorm and if I probably got with me about a foot of snow maybe I mean something along maybe like 10 inches and I basically I saw this at uh, my local game store time castle for 140 bucks uh, I was a broke like 12 13 year old so I had no money I was just watching all the games 81 videos the uh, classic game room videos and that's where I really started getting collecting I, I really really wanted this so I shoveled until my heart gave out and I made like 180 bucks Went down to I actually called them before I even started shoveling to put that on a hold, and I shoveled all day, made 180 bucks. Went down, bought this, and bought a couple of the games with this. So this is my crown jewel, my collection. One of them has the obviously the uh, Mindstorm screen overlay, and uh, let's see if we can get this turned on without without breaking it. I rarely turn this thing on, honestly. Okay, let's check it out. If no one's ever seen this before, I'm, I'm assuming most people watching the video have, but it's black and white graphics. And uh, Mindstorm is the game that's built into it. So it has a little overlay for it. It's kind of hard to do this in one hand, so I'll try my best. There we go. And uh, yeah, it's just like, kind of like polyline graphics, but um, you can adjust the sound like this. There's also the, the on and off button. It has two remotes down here. Uh, they are the same end as a uh, Sega Genesis, so if you wanted to really use a Sega Genesis, I guess you could. I believe you can. I think Mark from Classic Gamer actually did that. If you shave the ends off of the um, Genesis controller, you can stick it in there. And um, yeah, you have a reset button. And then that's how you turn it off. I'll fix this later because I don't want to do it with one hand. I uh, got the Vader 2600. Got the, this is the Telegame Sears Video Arcade. Back in the 70s and the 80s, I guess. I guess you can kind of make clone systems without getting sued. So that's one of the two um, Sears ones I have. And then, like I said, I'm not really a big fan of how I have these organized, especially because like the PS3 stuff and it's kind of jammed in here. But got a uh, later model uh, Nintendo Wii, the one that you kind of flip this way. Doesn't have any of the GameCube stuff on it. Uh, Indigo GameCube, PS3 Slim. This is a PlayStation 3 80 gigabyte backwards compatible. That's with the basically via like software. 
I am missing a little door here, but it is the backward compatible one. Uh, this is the this is the 20 gigabyte one. This is the black one. This is the one where back in the day, if you wanted to save a little bit of a little bit of money, because these were like a million dollars back in the day, you would get this one. Also backwards compatible, but it doesn't have the uh, the door, and like I said, it's only 20 gigabyte. This one is all black. And this 80 gigabyte one, as long as the one the one I have over there by my TV, that is, they're all backwards compatible, 60 gigabyte. They also are silver. Down here I have a uh, Coleco Gemini. This is the Atari 2600 clone system. I'm going to tell a little funny story about this. I remember when I first bought this back in 2000, actually, actually I got this gifted actually to, by one of my buddy's uh, parents uh, back in 2011, 2010 when I first started collecting. I actually called this number, if you want to call that number, you can have fun, and I wasn't expecting anybody to answer, and somebody actually answered, and I got nervous and hung up, and then I called back, and the guy was like, this is your second call. Uh, so basically, this number still works, and it is a click of guy as of 2010, when I last tried it, so that's a little fun story about that. Uh, this is the Wii Mini, and then this is another video Sears Arcade, this is the, the Model 2, I guess, I'm not sure that which one, when this one came out when that one came out uh, this is the Atari 5200 this is my four point four port system there's a two point or four port and this is the Atari 400 computer not really an old school computer guy or a collector of them but I've had this since I got this I got like a whole lot back in the day so I just keep it on the shelf and underneath I have some of the manuals for it as well and I think I have a game stuck in here yeah I got this game in there so yep all right, we're going to move on to over here. So this is going to be another angle of the game room from this, this half. Uh, so basically, I moved into this house in 2021, like January 2021. And this half of the basement was already finished. It was supposed to be like a bedroom. And this half of the basement was not finished. So about, this is about a, two years ago now. I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, me and Stan um, knocked this wall down that's dividing the room. Me and Stan drywalled everything, insulated everything, um, put new floors down. My buddy Mark's an electrician, so he wired everything up and basically expanded the game room. So um, I, I'm really, really happy with this. So this, this is just another angle of it. Step back over here to the original side of the game room. I have another couple of my favorite things in my collection. Uh, it is my infamous Nintendo 64 Toys R Us display. Uh, I love this thing so much, I have cut a hole into my drop ceiling, which I have tried to cleverly fix the hole by slanting, and then I have I have ideas on how I'm going to cover that hole up with some, maybe some wood and some caulking, but I haven't gotten to it, but as of right now, I'm going to keep the hole in my ceiling because I love this thing that much. Uh, I do play this, actually, probably at least three times a month, four times a month. Every time my friends come over, we always run a game up, that's why I have the controller sitting here ready to go. Uh, these control arms, if you are um, have any knowledge of kiosks, these control arms, after a while they get brittle because they're like a rubber, and they can break. And they are extremely expensive to fix, and I mean to replace, can't really fix them, but to replace. There are some people that sell aftermarket ones, they make, um, you know, like 3D printing them, or just making them by hand and they sell for a couple hundred dollars a piece so basically if whenever I play this I just make sure I run the cables over here so I'm not I'm not yanking on these too much uh, quick story about this I uh, bought this off a gentleman from Newport Rhode Island he listed it for he wanted 24 or 2500 dollars basically I showed up with a bunch of my friends a U-Haul truck 1800 bucks and uh, we made a deal came with this and then it also came with the which I'll show you in a little bit the official Sega power strip which was made to plug in the Genesis your CD 32x and whatever you want basically I'll show that in a few minutes but that was also like a hundred dollar item as well thrown in there but yeah this is my Nintendo 64 kiosk uh, as of right now I gotta make a couple of repairs well two repairs I guess to it I gotta replace these lights up here um, they get really really hot uh, so they sell um, LED ballast lights which are also more energy efficient a little bit brighter and they don't heat up as much and I gotta replace that one and that one just because I don't want it to get so hot. And my speaker recently has uh, shit the bed. So I'm trying to find a speaker that's comparable to the size. It's kind of a weird size. Um, so right now there's just some loose speaker wires in there, but everything else works on this besides that one speaker. 
and Mario's voice does work. You'll probably hear his demonic voice probably at some point in this video. I've already been talking for about 15 minutes, and I think the timer is about 15 minutes, so you'll, you'll hear him in a second. Uh, right next door is going to be my uh, PlayStation 4 kiosk. This is from GameStop. I got this for, uh, just by literally calling uh, every single GameStop. Like, I'm from Rhode Island. I call every single GameStop in Rhode Island, every single GameStop uh, in the Southern Mass area, and probably in, like, the most eastern side of Connecticut that touches Rhode Island. Uh, most people ask, because what I said was basically, hey, I heard you guys get rid of your kiosks. Any chance that I can get one for free? And some people laughed at me. Some people were like, I don't think I can do that. But one guy from the Seekonk, Massachusetts GameStop, from, if you're from Mass, you know exactly where that is. Uh, he was a really nice gentleman. He set this aside for me. Me and my little brother picked it up, and uh, now it's in my house. The TV is not original. TV is just uh, a Samsung 32 inch that I put on there. Uh, the TV is a Sony one with like a special mount. You had to, uh, they had to send it back to Sony. I already made a video how to how to mount that. Um, this is a dummy console. The way it works is you have a little key here and this whole thing slides out. And there's the PS4 in there. Like once again, I already made a video on this so I'm not gonna go too in depth on it. But this is my PlayStation 4 kiosk. On this side of the game room, um, once again, not really happy with the way these shelves are, so I'm hoping I'm getting um, another shelf similar to one to the ones I'll show you momentarily. It just makes the game's display a little better. Uh, these are all my NES games, all in alphabetical order. These ones are just ones I haven't added to my game collection app yet and put them in alphabetical order. N64 games. Once again, they kind of suck the display because they don't have the little labels on them except my local game store, if, if you do buy from them, they have the little, little labels they make. And then down under here is all my Super Nintendo games. On this CD rack right here, I have all my PlayStation 1 games. Some random posters. I, I don't have any more wall space, so I keep them in this corner over here. And then these are my two arcades. I got the Mortal Kombat 2. This is an earlier edition of the RK 1UP ones. You can you know the difference because the first generation didn't have any type of um, coin slot on it. As you see in this one, this is like the second generation one. It has the coin slot. The new generation ones, these are actually like like plastic. You can actually like mess with all that, which is kind of cool. I got this off of Facebook Marketplace for like 200 bucks, and then um, my girlfriend bought this for me for my birthday a couple years ago. It has a nice light up marquee. These are my these are my two arcade machines. Uh, up here on this shelf, I have my ColecoVision um, completing box, put that a random couple years ago. Uh, arcade um, Atari 2600 completing box, had this for a very long time. A little power supply, special one in the box. Atari 7800, got this from Time Capsule. Uh, it's not complete, it's, it has the system control in there, but it's just loose in the box. It doesn't have the styrofoam or the egg cart material, I'm not sure which one I had. Pretty sure it has styrofoam, but it doesn't have the styrofoam in that one or the manual. Um, the television, this is a complete in box, has all the styrofoam, I've had this for a pretty long time. And then some random uh, TV4 machine, which I, I found actually in my closet the other day when I was um, rearranging some stuff, so I decided to put it up here. So back it up a little bit. Uh, this is another new addition to the game room, another one of my crown jewels. This is a uh, Wii U kiosk. I'm not sure exactly what store this came from, it could have been a Best Buy or a GameStop, but... Uh, bought this on a guy uh, named Ryan. I actually met him at the Seekonk flea market a few years ago. He was going to be opening up a game store, uh, but the economy sucks, so it didn't really materialize. Uh, hit me up about this. Um, we didn't really communicate about it too much, so fast forward to now. Uh, I saw it on Facebook, and I messaged him, and I'm like, oh, shit, that's Ryan. So we made a deal for 500 bucks. It's in, like, literally, like, perfect condition. Uh, the only problem is, is that with most of these kiosks, when they get dumped, um, they get cut, the cords. There was no problem. I took the screen off. I cl deep cleaned everything. Uh, I came with the key. I put my own system in there. This is not the original um, kiosk system with all like the cool demo. My own white system. Uh, I took, like I said, I took it apart. Basically wired up the, uh, the pad so it's always charging. Base is in beautiful shape. I'll show you inside real quick. I can figure out this key situation. 
key is not does not want to come out right now, so I'm gonna mess with that later. But inside basically is a, a speaker, and then basically just like a bunch of controls. It is fully operational. All the sound controls are down below here. The power controls are down below here. Uh, the other day I was just playing some Mario Kart uh, 8 on this, so literally I got this like I think I got this on Sunday, and then I got the Sega Genesis one on a Thursday, so. Uh, most of my kiosk comes in two, as you would, uh, if you've been following the channel for a little bit. Oh, finally got the key out. I'll show you inside real quick. This is kind of hard to do with one hand, so bear with me here. There we go. That's what the inside looks like. You got a base, and all your hookups for the, the lights and the system. Having the key for this kiosk is quite nice. I've been on a, I'm on a, in a Facebook group. That just does all kiosks, and um, someone's selling this key right now for like 140 bucks. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat. All right, so I do actually play my old systems, not all the time. I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and say I play every single game I own because I would, I wouldn't be able to have a job. Um, but if when I do play systems or the older systems, I like to play it on an older TV. Obviously, I play all the newer stuff on the big screen, and then all the older stuff on this. This is a beautiful Sony Trinitron. This is from 1997. I forgot the exact model of it, but uh, it has one of the better S video pictures. Oh. Hope you heard that, but that was Mario's voice. He kind of sounds like uh, like a mouse. Uh, sometimes he sounds demonic, and um, especially when you're playing a game down here by yourself, and it kind of scares the shit out of you. But that's what the, that's what the kiosk does when it wants to reset itself, and then. It'll jump back on in a second, whatever game it is. Alright, so back to this. So, um, this TV has one of the best S video signals, I guess, um, for TVs at the time. Um, so I got this for free, and I hooked all my old systems up to it. So, I have my uh, Xbox, which isn't really hooked up right now. I use my 360, because uh, as the HDMI. Got my Master System, this is hooked up. Got my Gold Star 3DO. Not one of my Crown Jewels is my Atari Jaguar. Uh, the next thing I really, really want, I see this guy, I believe he's in New York. He is selling a Atari Jaguar and an Atari Jaguar CD, both complete in box, for like $5,000. Um, my girlfriend would kill me, but I've been really, really tempted to pick him that up, because that's like the, probably the last thing I want to get for a while. I, I keep saying that, but that's probably the last thing I want to get for a while, is just the uh, Atari CD, in box or not. That's what I want. I want to get as the uh, mark from Classic Game Room, sorry, the toilet. This is my Sega Tower. Sega Genesis, um, sorry, Sega Genesis Model 1, Sega CD Model 1, and then the 32X. Sometimes it works on the first try, sometimes it doesn't. It's usually finicky, and it's not going to work on the first, oh, there we go. I'll close it up. Sometimes it's weird, sometimes you gotta like unplug it a couple times, but this thing does work. I actually played uh, Dracula not too long ago with Stan, a terrible game, but really happy to have the Model 1. I don't, I've only ever seen this one time, and it was the one time when I bought this, so that's... It's pretty uncommon, in my opinion. I haven't seen too many of these out in the wild. Uh, this is gonna be my Sega Saturn. This is the one with the oval buttons. I actually got this at, uh... It's kind of funny. Um... Where my mom's consignment shop was a few years ago, which is all the other consignment shop way back in the day. I went up in there and I got this Sega Saturn for like $25. It was, it was pretty nice. It was when I first started collecting too and I was like super happy. Um, so that's my Saturn. I uh, got my Dreamcast. This is hooked up uh, using uh, VGA. I have a whole video about that. I believe I do. I'm uh, using um, VGA basically is the best thing we use for, for uh, Dreamcast. So if you do have a Dreamcast, use VGA. I have a little um, a little box, which I, like I said, I've done a video on it before on how, on how to hook it up for VGA to HDMI. But for my Dreamcast, uh, TurboGrafx-16. Got my Intellivision um, this 2. This is not hooked up right now. I have never played the Intellivision. I'm not going to act like I played the Intellivision. I just have it here because it looks nice on the shelf. Uh, and this is my Atari 2600 Junior. This is not hooked up as well. Um, I never really play Atari games. They're just a little bit too, um, I guess, old. I was born in the late 90s, so playing some games in the late 70s to me is just is a little hard. Um, move over here. This is where, like, the most, this is, like, the games I play the most. So I have, uh, this is my NES right now. This has been running probably since 
April of last year. I think I'm on World like seven right now. I'm Mario three, so that's sitting there right there. I wanna I wanna turn it off so so it doesn't like fry out. <laughs> so I have the Super Nintendo with the All Star, so I can play Mario three. Growing up, played that last night. You can save on that because I save battery, but and then my uh, N64. This is the regular one. Uh, I think the last game I played for that was Duke Nukem 64. Well, I believe I actually skipped over this a minute ago. I just kind of want to go back to it because I mentioned the N64. This is going to be my Pikachu N64. Got My mom got this for me last year for my birthday. I've been wanting this for a long time. I'm not really a big... I'm not actually a Pokemon fan at all. I really... I can't name more than three Pokemon, but... I do appreciate the, the coolness of this system and how the feet are basically the reset button and the Pokeball is the on-off button. Um, this is one of my crown jewels in my collection as well. And like I said, I got this for my birthday um, this past year, so I forgot to show that when I was going over there. Alright, let's walk back to on this side of the room. The video's already getting about a half hour long, so I want to speed this up a little bit. Uh, I have my PlayStation 3 stuff, or my, sorry, my PlayStation stuff and then my Xbox stuff. If you haven't noticed, I've tried to set this up um, a certain way. I have all my older systems boxed up there. Nintendo, Sega, and then on this side of the room, my Sony and my Microsoft stuff. So I got my PlayStation 5, my Destiny PS4. This is the Far Cry 4 Special Edition with the, uh, the cool little statue. Uh, GTA 5 Special Edition for the PlayStation 3. I cannot believe GTA 6 has not come out yet. I remember going to the midnight re uh, release for GTA 5, I believe it was September 17, 2013, and I wasn't old enough to give the game myself yet, so I had to have my stepdad stay with me, and uh, it was actually a pretty fun time. I do miss those midnight releases. That's one thing that digital media does not have, is those awesome midnight releases. I went to the I went to this one, I went to the Destiny one, I went to a couple of MW, MW2 one, MW, I mean Black Ops and Destiny 2, went to all the midnight releases. This is some really, really cool memories. Uh, so anyways, I got my super slim PlayStation 3 complete box, my PlayStation 2 complete box, the, the original fat one, the black one. Got my silver PlayStation 2, slim, black PlayStation 2 slim complete box, my white PlayStation 2 slim complete box. Let's move this up a little bit, don't bother me, there we go. My original PlayStation, the DualShock 1 complete in box, and then the PS1 complete in box. That's all my PlayStation stuff. I literally just put this up about half hour ago. Just added three new shelves, I was running out of space. Um, so down here I have my Atari 5200. The box is just so damn big, it's just kind of hard to, to put it in a place. If I wanted to put it on like one of these shelves, the shelf would have to be like this low. So it's just sitting on top of that. I uh, got my Kinect for the 360 inbox. The this is the second edition of the second gen, I guess you can say Xbox One with Brady on it. Original OG Xbox One. This is a Xbox 360 core system, the Elite system. Uh, this is Dead Island Riptide. It's actually a really cool, like special edition. I'm gonna show you on the back real quick. This is basically like a suitcase. It comes with this cool um, bottle opener, which is like a zombie's hand. A little, like, uh, it's not like, not like a hula girl. I don't think she moves, but it's like a little statue and a little key. I got this for, I think, like five or six dollars at uh, Plainfield Pike Flea Market. And then, once again, I'm a really, really big Grand Theft Auto fan. I don't know if everybody realized that, but uh, this is my special edition. There is a steel case in here. And very similar to this one, this has a big snapback and a money bag in it. So Grand Theft Auto has a pretty cool, like, I guess they have a trend of getting, like, things that can carry money. This is, like, a lot that actually actually locks. This whole case locks. And then on the money bag in here also locks as well. Uh, then up here I have my Halo Special Edition, original Xbox. I got this at a Salvation Army in Providence, probably in the back in, like, 2012 or 2013. I got this for five bucks and it works and it's always worked and if you look at the price of that now uh, I think my five dollar investment as a 12 year old was, was pretty good 
Uh, I've got Halo 3. This is going to be, I think this is the special edition. I'm not sure the exact edition this is, but this is the uh, Steelbook edition with one of the Halo special editions. That's what 360. This happens to be the Halo Reach one. With, this is not the matching controller. Unfortunately, I don't have the matching controller for it. This is the gray one. Uh, the Gears of War 360, I am missing the freaking faceplate for the DVD drive. So if you have one, let me know. I'll happily take it off your hands for some money. And then the matching controller. And this is just an Xbox 360E console. This is like one of the last ones that came out. And then I'm going to go back to where basically where the majority of my games are. Uh, these are two separate shelves. This is one here, and then the second one starts over here. I want to get one of these shelves and replace that shelf with it. Because you can just you can adjust the height of these shelves the way you want, and you can lay the games a little bit better. So I'll start up here. I have all of them alphabetical order. I got my Switch, my one Switch game, my Wii U, my Wii, and then GameCube. As you can see, it just kind of goes in order, I guess, a little bit. PS5, 4, 3, 2, and then my 360 stuff all the way down. And I got a whole empty shelf on the bottom. Uh, currently in my collection, according to my, I have an app called My Game Collection. I add every single game I get, and I have just under 1,600 games. I think I have 1,547 games right now. Um, that will probably change. Like I said, I haven't even added all of these games on top of the shelf to it yet. So yeah, this is my this is my game room. I've basically taken like three years to build this to where it is now. This is this is another door I have over here. Going to my laundry room, another extra closet. I'm gonna show another angle of it real quick. It is usually this neat. I do have like really bad OCD, so I try to keep it as neat as possible. I got all my, my dogs have about 500 million toys in here as well, so they're upstairs right now, but when they come down, they um, these are literally all over the floor. Yeah, so this is, this is my game room. Um, you know, if you have any, any comments, any questions, if you want to say something nice in the comments, put something mean in the comments, go right ahead. Uh, I post these, these, these type of videos because not to gloat or to show off. These are just my favorite types of videos to watch on YouTube. Everything that I've done in this game room, I have either gotten an inspiration, taken an idea, and kind of either exactly copied it or done my own little twist on it from other game room tour videos on YouTube. So that's why I post these, so. One more little quick view of it, but. Yeah, like I would say, guys, um, thanks for watching my video. I'm really hoping to post more videos again in the future. I'm kind of slacking on it. Um, please like the video. If you are not already, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps. And like I said before, if you want to leave a comment, good or bad, down below. I really appreciate that. Um, if you guys are living in the Northeast right now, there's going to be a big snowstorm coming up at the time of this video. So everybody be safe. And I'll catch you later. Thank you.